him, uh, and the argument went on for some time. The next day, Peter Rippon became even more adamant about the importance of the CPS outcome. I assume still no word. I think we should stop working on the other elements, because we don't really have a strong enough story without it. Having effectively told them to stop gathering new evidence against Savile, he then cancelled the editing of the piece. I'll pull editing, etc. for now. Did there seem to be any room for changing his mind once his mind no, had been made up? No, it felt like there'd been a decision to kill the story. Six days later, the BBC press office asked Peter Rippon how publicity for the story should be handled. Peter Rippon was blunt. We are putting the cart way before the horse here. We've been looking at the story, but it is far from clear it will ever be strong enough for us even to run it. He copied in his immediate boss, Stephen Mitchell, the deputy director of news. So in 13 days, Peter Rippon had gone from excellent, prepared to broadcast, to this story isn't strong enough. And we now know that he hadn't watched the interview with Karen Ward the first person to go on camera testifying to Savile's abuse. At no time did he say, I want to see everything and I'll come to a view on it. We did prepare and give him um, one of the drafts of the script so that he could see which we'd made as full as we possibly could with quotes that we, we already had, with transcripts of interviews that we already had, and also with stuff that we knew we were going to get. And we gave that to him so that to try and impress upon him that we thought we had the story. The producer emailed his editor, warning him of the potential for disaster if he dropped the film. I was sure the story would come out one way or another, and that if it did, the BBC would be accused of cover-up. In fact, I wrote a, an email to Peter saying, the story is strong enough, and the danger of not running it is substantial damage to BBC reputation. Two days later, the CPS told the team it had decided in 2009 not to prosecute Savile because of lack of evidence, not because he was old and frail. Peter Rippon killed the story. I was very unhappy the story didn't run because I felt we'd spoken to people who collectively deserved to be heard. Um, they weren't heard. And I thought that that was a failure. Were you concerned that that actually compounded the, um, the hurt? Yes. I've, you know, I felt we had a responsibility towards them. We'd, we'd got them to talk to us. But above all, we did believe them. And so then, for their stories not to be heard, yes, I felt very bad about that. I felt very much that I'd let them down. Was it the right editorial call? A lot of people will have a different view about that. What do you think? Well, I, it, I, you know, I think with hindsight I might have made a different call, but I do fully understand why Peter made the call that he did. As predicted, news emerged that the Savile story had been spiked. In January, cover-up was suggested. In February, that it had been pulled to protect the corporation's image. The BBC publicly denied it. Peter Rippon said it was absolutely untrue that the Newsnight investigation was dropped for anything other than editorial reasons. The Jimmy Savile story finally exploded back into life three weeks ago on ITV's Exposure. It's been the scoop of the year. Detectives will be investigating events at locations across the country. The BBC investigation BBC. says five women have come forward with allegations. Activities. She says she has no memory of that. Under 16 at the time. It's pursuing 120 separate lines of inquiry. And the chorus of voices demanding to know why the BBC had not run the story last year grew ever louder. To begin with, the BBC held firm. Savile's abuse was a matter for the police and there could be no inquiry at the corporation in case it got in the way. But that would soon change. And do you think there's any resignations for the BBC over this? It's been a baptism of fire for the new Director General, George Entwistle. He's apologised to Savile's victims. I have one thing to repeat. That is a profound and heartfelt apology on behalf of the BBC to every victim. And he announced a number of inquiries. These will be forensic, but also soul-searching examinations. 
Our audience's trust in us is paramount. We will do everything in our power to maintain that trust. But there remain a number of key questions about the BBC's handling of the Savile crisis. The first, why didn't they run their story based on the evidence they had? In a blog, the Newsnight editor explained his reasons for cancelling the investigation. Newsnight is not normally interested in celebrity expose. I felt if we could prove the police or the CPS had let the women down in some way, we should go ahead. But the Newsnight producer remains adamant that was not his initial brief. I thought the story was about Jimmy Savile, paedophile, and I thought that was a strong enough story to run. Is it possible that you misunderstood what your editor wanted or that maybe you just didn't keep him up to date with all the developments in your investigation? It's possible, but uh, I think once you've got the story that Jimmy Savile is a paedophile, you've got a victim on camera, you've got corroboration from other witnesses and victims, when you've got confirmation for the first time that Savile was investigated by the police as a paedophile, I think you've got a great story and I think any journalist would run that. The Director General, George Entwistle, sent an email to all staff giving the official BBC line that Newsnight were investigating how Surrey police had handled their Savile investigation. As is now well known, the BBC Newsnight programme investigated Surrey Police's inquiry into Jimmy Savile towards the end of 2011, but decided not to go ahead with the broadcast. But Panorama has seen internal emails which appear to question the BBC's official version of events. One was sent by the Newsnight producer telling the Director General that he was wrong. George, one note. The investigation was into whether Jimmy Savile was a paedophile. I know because it was my investigation. BBC's perspective. You've done a lot Yet the very next day, an interview with the corporation's head of editorial policy and standards was broadcast in which it was said again. Well, they were investigating the Surrey Police investigation into Jimmy Savile, and, and they discovered that the Surrey Police had done a perfectly decent investigation into Jimmy Savile, had made recommendations to the Crown Prosecution Service, and then subsequently uh, it had been dropped because they felt there was a lack of evidence. Now, you know... I felt they were misleading at the very least. I think they were suggesting that the story wasn't about the thing that had been commissioned, which was allegations about Jimmy Savile's behaviour to teenage girls. It seemed to give a misleading impression. And overall, I just felt, well, once again, it's like their stories are being minimised. And the team had more direct evidence of abuse at Duncroft than they had been told the police and the CPS had originally considered. The CPS had only looked at one allegation of indecent assault investigated by Surrey Police. But four years on, Newsnight had spoken to five former pupils who said they'd been sexually abused at Duncroft. So what happened to Newsnight's evidence once the story was dropped? That's problem number two. Should the evidence have been handed to the police? In his blog, Peter Rippon said, We are confident that all the women we spoke to had contacted the police independently already. But this wasn't correct. The key witness, Karen Ward, categorically told us that she'd not gone to the police, and Peter was reminded many times that that was the case, both verbally and in writing. So you had made him aware of that? Yes, and we did so again, myself and Liz McKean, after he wrote the blog. So you actually pointed out this inaccuracy? Yes, of course. And it wasn't changed? Not as far as I know. Peter Rippon's team emailed him, telling him he'd got it wrong. He says that's what he'd been told. In his blog, he adds, We also had no new evidence against any other person that would have helped the police. But they did. Remember, Karen Ward had said she saw Gary Glitter having sex with an underage girl in Jimmy Savile's dressing room at Television Centre. Shouldn't that have been passed to the police? The team didn't think so, and for once, they were all in agreement. I don't think we withheld anything that would have been much use, evidentially, to the police. Jimmy Savile was dead, 
and could not be prosecuted. In our interview, Karen Ward said she didn't know who Gary Glitter was having sex with in a BBC dressing room. So it's very limited, limited use. Uh, but yes, maybe the decision should have been taken to pass it on. A source close to the Surrey police investigation has told Panorama that they weren't aware of the Gary Glitter allegation back in 2007. It's new information. And the fact that it's an allegation about a living person makes it all the more serious. Since being interviewed for ITV, Karen Ward has spoken to police. The police are now investigating people still living connected to Savile's crimes, including, we understand, Gary Glitter. A few days afterwards, I was contacted by officers from the Met and they came to my house and they did nine and a half hours of interviews and statements with me. And at no point did they say, I don't believe you or that's not right. Now there's a third problem for the BBC which has dogged it since this controversy erupted. Did the Newsnight editor take the decision to stop the investigation on his own, as the BBC's maintained? Or was he subject to pressure from above? There's been widespread speculation outside the BBC that the Newsnight investigation was shelved because of the big tribute programmes already commissioned to celebrate Jimmy Savile's life. I've spoken to a number of people at all levels in, in, the, in the BBC and a lot of people will have to be lying for uh, it to be true that pressure was put on Peter Ribbon to pull that film. And I don't believe they are. Panorama has found no evidence that Peter Rippon was told to drop the story. But it's difficult to explain why he went off it so quickly. During their rouse about it, Liz McKean says she was left with the clear impression that Peter Rippon was feeling the heat. On the morning of the 30th of November, I've, I've fired off this email to a friend saying, you know, PR says if the bosses aren't happy, I can't go to the wall on this one. And the final big question, what did the new Director General know then? In the top job for just four weeks, when the Newsnight investigation was dropped, he was head of BBC Vision, in charge of TV output. Which means he was ultimately responsible for those tribute films. So, for the first time in 17 years, it's time for a letter. <laughs> How much did George Entwistle know about the Newsnight investigation which threatened his Christmas schedule? We understand that at an awards ceremony here on December the 2nd last year, the Director of News, Helen Bowden, told George Entwistle that if the Newsnight investigation went ahead, he might have to change his Christmas schedule. We're told the whole conversation lasted less than 10 seconds. She didn't give me any more information than to say that it's something news that we're looking at, and I said, thank you for letting me know. So, in a 10-second meeting, the director of news doesn't offer any detail, and the director of vision doesn't ask any questions. The thing that was uppermost in my mind was an absolute determination to ensure that nobody should construe anything I had to say or think about this as a matter of any pressure. So, Helen said to me, um, we're looking into Jimmy Savile, um, and I said, Thanks for letting me know. I hope you'll keep me updated. I think this might be a problem that, that, that George Entwistle has, um, that for all the right reasons he did the wrong thing. In trying to appear um, to do this at arm's length, to not interfere, to not have any influence over what was going, in, going on in news, um, he probably stepped a little too far back. Uh, and I think, so I think, he, think, did that, I think he did that for good reasons. Well, I think he did it for good reasons. Tomorrow, the Director General will face questions from MPs on the Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee. He is there to account for the BBC. But actually, he did hold one of the key positions at the time some of these decisions were taken. So yes, obviously, we will be asking him about what his knowledge was at that time, whether or not he did play any part in the decisions that were taken, and why perhaps he didn't ask as many questions as some people think he should have done. This is exactly why the BBC can't possibly win on this. Because if it's shown that, that George did, in fact, all ask all these questions, then a heart interference pressure, if it's shown that he didn't, then you know, it's 
top BBC man asleep at the wheel. We put the points we've raised to all the BBC senior management involved and asked for interviews. They declined. In a statement, the BBC said today it was putting first and foremost the victims of Jimmy Savile's abuse. And that's why it's announced a judge-led review. They added that a second independent review, which will seek to establish what exactly happened at Newsnight, is the right forum to resolve detailed issues relating to the programme. The BBC admitted there were inaccuracies in Peter Rippon's blog on October the 2nd and have now corrected them, stating that they accepted there were allegations of abusive conduct on BBC premises and, in some cases, the women Newsnight had contacted had not spoken to the police and that the police were not aware of all the allegations. The BBC accepted there were allegations that some of the Duncroft staff knew or may have known about the abuse. It added, We should also make it clear we now accept that the Newsnight investigation did not start out as an investigation into the Surrey Police's handling of the case against Mr Savile. Newsnight editor Peter Rippon is stepping aside while the investigation into what happened at Newsnight is carried out. Do you think all of this could have been avoided? very easily by broadcasting a very good story uh, about Sir Jimmy Savile and how he was a paedophile. That would have avoided all of this. Top groups, top records, top everything. Jimmy Savile, the star, was the BBC's creation. For half a century, it, more than any other organisation, failed to face up to an unpalatable truth. He fooled them or pulled the wool over their eyes he managed to get them all to look the other way, even though almost every one of them would have heard rumors, and he was hiding in plain sight. The Metropolitan Police say they're investigating allegations from more than 200 potential victims of the late presenter and others. They might have confirmed some of the alleged abusers are still alive. Panorama will give the police any new evidence we've uncovered. And the woman who revealed that story to the Newsnight team, yet went unheard, is at last being listened to. I think being believed might end up being a good feeling. At the moment, it's not so good because I don't really know how to cope with it. But one day I will, and then it will be good. This is the worst crisis that I can remember in my nearly 50 years at the BBC. I don't think the BBC has handled it terribly well. All we have as an organization is the trust of, of people, the people that watch us and listen to us. And if we don't have that, if we start to lose that, that's very dangerous for the BBC. There's no doubt trust in the corporation has been badly shaken by the decision to halt the investigation into Savile. But it's the decision to run tributes celebrating the star when all the while his victims were trying to be heard that may yet haunt the BBC for years to come. If you or someone you know has been affected by the issues in this programme, there are organisations you can contact for help and support. For more information, visit bbc.co.uk slash panorama or call the BBC Action Line to hear recorded information on 08100 077 077. Lines are open 24 hours and are free from a landline. Mobile operators will charge. Our world. Complex and diverse. Welcome to the age.